The Tour de France is arguably the most demanding cycling race in the world. Over the course of a 21 day race, riders have to go through 3,500 kilometers of racing. Uh, so really it puts a lot of psychological, physiological stress on the riders. The aim of the research was to um, track um, elite cyclists during the Tour de France and really just to see how sleep, perceived experiences and measures of exercise performance are related across that entire period. So what we did was we tracked eight elite cyclists who partook in the 2020 Tour de France. We monitored them for seven days before the Tour de France start, 23 days during the Tour de France event, and then we monitored them for seven days after the event. Sleep was um, measured using Garmin wristwatch devices. We asked them questions on a daily basis uh, using the Lumin Arc Mobile software. We also um, used objective measures of the, the cyclist's performance and their exercise load. In the end, to answer our research questions, we bring all that information together and uh, analyze the data, and hopefully that gives us a, a good idea of the relationships between sleep, perceived experience, and performance of the cyclists during Tour de France. So one of the main, most interesting findings was that um, we saw that during the race, when, when we compared to before the race, the Tour de France riders on average actually had um, a little bit more uh, sleep duration, so they got more sleep per night. But also alongside that, what we saw was that their sleep quality actually dropped. And we also saw that factors such as fatigue, um, muscular soreness and stress also went up, as you'd expect. And really what we think is that that increase in those perceived experience factors is leading to that reduction in sleep quality. It's actually making their sleep more fragmented. However, it's also possible that um, potentially the ever-changing or the frequently changing sleep environments that the cyclists are in, so they're changing hotels um, each night perhaps, is actually messing with their or disrupting their sleep quality. The second finding is really that we saw um, cyclists' mood, um, how they rate their own performance, and then how satisfied they are with that performance was lower during the race than before the race. And interestingly, those factors also remained lower after the race. And potentially they're important findings for um, actual performance. And that's because we know that having a stable mood and mentality and attitudes towards yourself, your performance and other people is uh, potentially important for performance itself. Potentially the most surprising finding come out of this is that we actually didn't see many strong associations between how well the riders slept over the entire recording period and their perceived experiences. And really this is in contrast to what we'd expect because research has shown that sleep and perceptions, your mood, um, how you're feeling are quite tightly linked. But really we, we're seeing that this inconsistency um, with between our findings and previous research is likely due to the research being undertaken in, in the real world setting, in the real world Tour de France setting. This research is really quite important, um, primarily because of the novelty of the data. It's very hard to come by um, data collected from elite cyclists, let alone during the most demanding stage race of them all, the Tour de France. And um, yeah, that really speaks to the novelty of the findings. They really have that real world applicability. They generalize well to real cyclists in real world competitions.